guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. Today we are celebrating the channel hitting 5K, me hitting my halfway 75 pounds down goal, along with answering a bunch of your questions during a Q&A. And hey, let's do a giveaway. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're new, hey, I'm Lauren. I am on a healthy lifestyle journey and I have a goal for losing 150 pounds. I use the WW Blue Plan along with counting calories for a calorie deficit and I've reached my halfway goal mark. So today I'm doing a really fun Q&A answering a bunch of your questions that you guys sent in over on my Instagram as well as here on my YouTube channel in the comments. And uh, yeah, it's morning time though, and I need some coffee before I start filming. So I'm gonna grab some coffee. Why don't you guys grab a coffee, some water, a wine? I don't know what time you're watching this. It's five o'clock somewhere. Whew, I just turned up our air. We've officially hit that time of year in Georgia where you're either sweating or freezing cold because it's so warm and sticky outside. And then anytime you turn on the air conditioning, it's like freezing everywhere. So pardon, pardon my sweating. You guys, I'm so excited for this video. I have thought about doing a Q&A before, and honestly, I talked myself out of it because I was like, no one's gonna ask you any questions. No one's actually watching your videos. But I just wanna thank you guys so much for following my story here on YouTube and over on Instagram. You guys have been such an important part of my healthy journey. I'm so, so thankful for everything you guys have given to me and my family just by following my channel. So, all right, let's get into these questions. You guys had a lot of them. I was, okay, I know I'm so old school nerd, but I'm filming on my phone right now. So I printed the questions, I like put them all together. <laughs> Also, sorry if you guys hear some noises in the background, it's Saturday morning, my family is home, Josh has Lila downstairs and they're playing and doing some stuff outside. So if you hear random noises around, I live here and my family's here, so there you go. So speaking of my family, I'm gonna get into some of the more like personal life questions you guys asked first. And then I have tons of questions about WW, calorie deficit, my journey on YouTube, as well as don't forget, hang around. I have information on a giveaway that I'm sharing for you guys. I'm so excited to give you guys some of my favorite products. So I'm sharing more about that a little bit later in the video. And I'm also sharing my official eight month update. I've updated everyone over on Instagram. I kind of did my weigh in announcement for the month, but but I am sharing it here in this video at the end with you guys, my weigh-in, my measurements, my side-by-side -side picture update with my month-to-month -month progress, so hang tight. Okay, so first question up was, what did you do for work before becoming a stay-at-home mom? And I studied theater in college, go figure it. I started studying communications and then switched my major and then switched colleges and graduated with my Bachelor of Science in Performing Arts Theater but I studied stage management and directing, not acting. Um, I really loved the behind the scenes administrative business side of the performing arts. And so I did stage manage professional theater for a couple years out of school. And then I found a really great position as a performing arts manager at a park district in the Illinois Chicago suburbs. And so that's what I was doing before becoming a stay at home mom. I worked there for two and a half years. I oversaw their drama, dance, art, special events, all sorts of things <laughs> for the park district. So then the next question is, why did you move to Georgia and will you ever return to Chicago? So we moved to Georgia for my husband's job, which is actually another one of the questions. You guys, it was so funny of all the questions that were asked, the most popular questions had to do with how did Josh and I meet? What does Josh do for work? And are we having more kids? So <laughs> I will answer all of that. He was hired on as the technical director for one of the large performing arts companies in the Atlanta area. So that's what he does. And yeah, we met working in theater. I was from Illinois, he was from upstate New York and we actually both went to work for a summer at a summer stock theater house in New Hampshire. And while working there, he was the technical director and I was the stage manager. We fell in love. <laughs> Sorry guys, these just keep fogging up and I feel like they're glaring and being distracting. So we're just gonna lose those. You guys just wanted to know everything about Josh. <laughs> so the next question is what age range are you and your husband? Um, I don't know, does it look like we have a big gap in our ages? We don't. I'm 32, Josh is 30. More kids, sibling for Lila. Any plans for more kids? 
when do you see yourself getting pregnant again? So yes, we do see ourselves expanding our family. Um, it's actually one of the reasons why for me with my health journey um, to get healthier is so I have a more positive, healthy experience. I was 325 pounds when I got pregnant with Lila. We were very lucky that we did not struggle to get pregnant um, when we had her. I was 355 when I gave birth to her and the whole process was not positive. It was a very difficult pregnancy. It was traumatic at points. I have a lot of negative feelings and memories of it, which makes me really sad that I did not enjoy the pregnancy process. Um, and I just want to be in a better spot for myself before we start trying again for baby number two. I think we're a hard stop at three. I don't know if we'll even get to three. We're going to see how two goes. We're just going to see how two goes and what God has in plan for our family. But I think I will do um, maybe a story time. Do you guys like these kind of sit down story time, get to know me kind of videos? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I think I'm going to do a bigger story time on my plus size pregnancy experience because it's a doozy. I will share it as a separate story time if you guys are interested in that. How do you prep your shredded chicken? I actually shared this in one of the videos. I will link that one in the description down below. But my favorite way, it's so easy, mess free to prep chicken is I buy a bunch of boneless skinless chicken breasts. I throw them in my crock pot. I cook them on low for like six hours. And then when they're done cooking, I put them in my KitchenAid mixer with the paddle attachment. You turn that on on low and it shreds your chicken for you. And then I have it done in bulk. So what I'll do is I will package it into single one pound freezer Ziploc bags and put them in our freezer. So I have cooked shredded chicken ready to go. And then it thaws like that. And that's a whole big step of dinner done and I can use it in a million recipes. Were you a chef? Do you have any culinary training? You guys, no, <laughs> not whatsoever. Um, I have always loved cooking. I did cooking and baking with my mom and my grandmother who watched me when I was a child since I was little. And I've always loved to cook. I've always loved food. <laughs> and I watch a lot of Food Network television. So it's just something I really enjoy. It's a passion of mine, it's a hobby of mine, and I'm glad that I can share some stuff with you guys. But no, I am not a professional or a trained chef whatsoever. But that would be really cool. How do you keep away from toddler snacks? I don't. There are some things that I will eat that Lila eats. Like I love goldfish and hey, you get like 55 of those little fishies for like three points. So it's actually a really good WW snack. So it's, long, it's all about portions, right? It's all about portions and balance. There's no off limit foods when you're doing WW or counting calories and doing a calorie deficit tracking. So that's my favorite thing about the programs and why I think I found success on them is because nothing is off limits and you learn so much about portions and balance. So, Hey, if you want to go for that, pack of gummies or, you know, the crackers or cheese that your kiddos have, it's fine. Just count it. The other thing I really like to do is make sure you're not forgetting about yourself when you're grocery shopping. So as moms, I know we are like, I got to get snacks for the kids. I got to get snacks for the kids. And you load up on that stuff, but that's not all you need to have in your house. Maybe make some snacks or buy some snacks that you know that you love and you already know the calories or points of and have them ready to grab and go in the pantry. That's why I love meal prepping like the energy bites or mini muffins or when you go to the store, you can purchase. Um, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite snacks. I'm not a huge snacker, to be honest. Um, but I love doing, you know, like the turkey snack sticks and baby bell cheeses, something with protein, um, is usually my go-to or again, the things that I make myself. So I have snacks on hand that I know the points and calories of that are easy to track. And that helps me not want anything else that I could just grab easily that are like there for my kids. I also don't buy a ton of like junk food to keep in the house. We just really don't. I'm very much so of the mindset, like if we're going to have treats or sweets in the house, I'm going to make them myself. I'm not going to buy them, but that's just me. Um, that's kind of how I go about navigating 
treats and things is I don't buy them at the store. If I want them, I have to make them and then I portion them. Okay, so similarly, this one was asking during family time when I'm with my husband who doesn't follow the plan, how do I stay on track? Um, if you guys have been following me for a long time, you know, Josh did do WW with me for like the entire first year that I did WW. I have been on WW for about 20 months now. Josh was following with me, which it's always great to have that support. But honestly, now that he's not following and tracking, he eats the same things I do. I'm cooking in the house. You're going to eat what I make. <laughs> so the thing is, is healthy food is still good food. What I make is not different from what we would normally eat. I do find some things ingredients wise that I can swap out that have better calories and points or that I think are healthier options, but I'm still making food that he loves. We still eat enchiladas. We still eat tacos. We still have pasta pretty much weekly. You know, they're all things that both he and my daughter will eat and they're things that I know I can track because this mama is not about making three different meals for dinner every night. Hard stop. When meal prepping, do you get tired of eating the same thing all week? Yeah. When I have meal prepped in the past where I'm prepping one lunch dish for the entire week, one breakfast dish for the entire week, yes, I get sick of it but I feel like I meal prep differently now. Um, if you guys have seen my meal prep videos, you know that I don't just do a single lunch dish, a single dinner dish, a single breakfast dish for the entire week. Normally I'll do two different recipes for lunches so I can alternate. I'll do a couple meal preps for breakfast, but then leave my other days open and flexible. So if I wanna just grab toast and yogurt or cottage cheese with fruit or make up some eggs that day, I can. Um, dinners, I don't meal prep a lot because I like to cook them that day because our schedule can be kept flexible that way. I'll come up with a meal plan, like a list of ideas for the week and have that on hand. That's how I grocery shop for those kinds of things. And then I'll kind of figure out day by day which of those meals we're doing. I try to stick to it, but it doesn't always work out. You know, my husband's hours change all the time and with having a toddler, she's starting activities and our day schedule changes a lot. So we just keep it flexible. But that's my key to meal prepping and not getting sick of it is make sure you include variety in your meal prep. It doesn't really take that much more time depending on what recipes you're doing. I always try to balance out if there's a recipe I'm meal prepping for like lunches that involves more cooking, I can do that. But then let's mix it up with a couple easy meal preps like a salad or you know something I can throw together like a snack box, that kind of thing. Um, so it's just easier and you're not spending hours and hours and hours meal prepping. Although I will say the time you put into meal prepping makes it so worth it the rest of the week when you don't have to take time out of your day or evening every single day and night to prep your meal for that day or the next day. What was your first step you took in weight loss? I feel like I'm always restarting. So I totally feel you on that. Um, I think the first time I realized my weight made me different, I was like in third grade. I've been heavy my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I have done diet after diet, plan after plan, and I got to a point where after I got married, I just got sick of caring about my weight all the time. And I did stay static for a few years, and then after having my daughter and then moving out of state where we didn't know anybody, I felt so lonely and I was honestly quite depressed. Um, that really is when my weight took off again and I hit that highest mark of 365. And it was at that point I started feeling the effect my weight was having on my body. It wasn't just me not liking the way I looked in my clothes or not liking who I saw in pictures. I was feeling the weight on my body. I was having lower back pain. I had trouble sleeping at night and ended up sleeping on the couch a lot because I couldn't get comfortable or, you know, a, my limbs would start falling asleep because of the pressure and weight on them. I was having a harder time breathing at night because of the weight on my chest. It was hard for me to play on the floor with my daughter. Um, and I just felt like I wasn't living I wasn't living. I wasn't living the life I wanted to because my first thought whenever we talked about doing something or going somewhere, the first thought that would come into my mind was how will my weight affect this? Is there a weight limit? Can I have the endurance to go for that hike with my family or will I fit on a ride at an amusement park? So once, once the thoughts became overwhelming, 
about everything. I knew I had to change something. Um, and one of the first things I did, I actually think I talked about this in my one month update way back in November, I want to say, um, when I had like four subscribers. <laughs> but I talked about how one of the first things I did with my weight loss journey was I sat down and I wrote out, I physically wrote out my reasons why why I wanted to lose weight. And those have been reasons that I've gone back to time and time again, when things are hard, when I feel like the scale isn't moving how I want it to, um, that's, I have my reasons. And that's how I know that no matter what kind of stall I'm going to hit, if it's a few weeks in a row where I don't lose anything, if I have a gain, I know I'm gonna keep going. Weight loss is not a steady decline. It's going to have peaks and valleys. You're gonna have flat line where you stay the same. You might gain a little, then you might lose a lot. And then it's that's how healthy weight loss is going to go. You're never just gonna be like loss, 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 loss. Because at some point or another, your body's going to get used to what you're doing and you're going to have to change things up. So I try not to look at it as restarting, but just keep going. Because as long as you're working towards your health goals, you're making progress. You're learning new things every time you restart or you keep going. And it's something that you're learning and you're adjusting for your lifelong relationship with your health. How did you start with weight loss and WW? So I made that choice that I needed to change things. And this time it was really important for me that I didn't find a program that was like promising me, you'll lose 15 pounds in 30 days. I knew that I needed to find a way to do slow, steady, happy, healthy weight loss. And I was okay with knowing I might only lose one or two pounds at most a week, but that adds up two pounds a week in a year is a hundred pounds for the year, which I mean, I did not <laughs> make that goal. So I want to say, obviously I had heard of Weight Watchers before WW had rebranded. I was seeing a lot of commercials and I think I even went to YouTube and just started researching weight loss journeys and what people were using. And for some reason, when I first got started, counting calories overwhelmed me. And I was so scared of having to track every single thing I ate that I was going to mess it up, that I wasn't going to be able to do it. And I really liked that with WW. When I did the questionnaire, when I first started, it placed me as a blue plan. That's how I got started doing blue. Um, I loved that there were zero point options. There were things I could eat that yes, I would track them, but I wasn't limited to a hard stop on eating for the day. If you were hungry, you could still eat lean proteins, fresh fruit, vegetables, and you can have as much of that as you want. I feel like there was always something in me that was worried about not being able to eat as much as I wanted. And when I found that out about the WW plan, I think that relaxed my mind a bit and just seemed like something maybe I could actually try and succeed at because I knew there was always an option to eat more if I wanted it. How did your WW journey start? Online or in-person meetings? So I have only ever done the online app only version. I have never been inside a WW studio. I have never weighed in in person or even talked to the coaches. So. I have just followed the app. That's it. Do you pre-track or track as you go? So I only ever track as I go. I like that it gives me the flexibility to change my mind and I'm not like stuck on a plan day to day. It feels more like I'm just living my life and making eating choices as I am feeling them. Like if I want to eat, I will eat and then I'll track it. Or if I don't want to eat, I'm not going to force myself to. So the nice thing though I will say is I do um, build recipes and meals a lot in the app. I use those features a ton because that way, like all of our favorite meals or favorite foods or recipes that I make, they're all saved in the app. So it saves me a lot of time. Now that I've been doing WW for over 20 months, I have a lot of those saved. So when I have a night and I'm making enchiladas for my family, that meal is already saved. The exact recipe that I use every time is saved in there and so I can track it easily. And if I know that that's my plan for the night, 
I, if I need, I mean, I kind of know how many points a lot of those recipes are just because I've made them so many times. Um, same thing with calories now as I've been tracking calories more frequently, I have a better idea about what foods are how many calories just off the top of my head without having to research and plug in everything. Um, but I'm able to think about that during my day so I don't blow it by nighttime with whatever dinner I have planned. So sometimes I'll pre-track if I have a specific meal plan I know I'm following for dinner or I will at the beginning of the day once I make the decision what I'm making for dinner that night I might pre-track that just so I know for breakfast and lunchtime and snacking throughout the day like how much wiggle room I have for two reasons. So I don't go over after I have dinner with my family, but also so I'm not left with a ton of points at the end of the day, because that is also hard for me personally. And I will clear this up because I know that was a question I got asked in my recent what I eat in a day video. Someone was joking that they never had the problem with points left over at the end of the day. And I don't want you guys to think that's always how I've been. When I first started WW, I was constantly running out of points. Like I had probably the first month I was on WW, I eased my way into it. So I would start tracking at the beginning of the day and I would do really good about tracking everything. Whether I made my points or not, I took the opportunity to track my points so I could get a better idea of how I was eating before. And there were days the first couple weeks that I was on WW, I think I started with 43 points a day and there were days that I was eating like easily 65, 70 points a day from how I would normally eat. So that's another big way of how I started WW. I took the first couple weeks. I didn't strive for perfection. I strived to learn about my eating habits as they currently existed. So I started the program, I ate how I normally ate for the first week or two and just tracked points. And then I started realizing, wow, if I switched out this for this, or hey, instead of having this much, I need to change my portion size, or you know, I need to skip doing, you know, X, Y, Z, I learned about my current eating habits and I figured out things I needed to change to start making improvements and start getting to that number every day. And now though I'm in a place where I feel like even though my weight has gone down 75 pounds, I still get 38 points a day. And I think that's just because my body has continued losing weight at that number. Obviously if I hit a bigger stall, that's when WW, the app will normally bring your points number down that and as you lose weight because your body as you lose weight needs less calories to function. But for me, I have changed my portion sizes so much with eating and because one of the things I have always fought was I tended to be someone who would drink a lot of my calories and points and I would do that all day long and then not eat and then just eat a massive meal at nighttime. So because I'm working on reconfiguring that and I'm not drinking my calories and points anymore and I'm spacing my food out throughout the day, that's why now I fight to get all of those points in. So speaking of that, someone mentioned, I only get 23 points a day and I'm struggling with hunger. Any tips or tricks? With 23 points a day, that is I think the lowest um, points value you will get on WW Blue Plan. So 23 points, that goes fast. I totally get it struggling with hunger. Um, so some of the things I did when I started WW and I felt like even at 43 points, I was hungry all the time because it was such a big change in my eating habits. Um, don't forget about your zero point foods. If you're truly hungry, eat some more zero point foods. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. But if you're hungry, eat. That's why you have zero point foods. That's why WW gives you weeklies. Don't feel restricted to only 23 points a day. That's one of the things I noticed um, as I started tracking calories too, is my weekly points are there for a reason. I shouldn't be sticking to only under, as far as I can be under 38 points a day and never using my weekly. So I suggest take your weeklies and if you are consistently hungry every day, eating only 23 points a day, try spreading them out. So if you get maybe 32 weeklies, spread those out among your seven days of 23 points a day and it's gonna give you a couple extra points to use to try and balance out that hunger, to give you that extra snack that your body wants. 
Um, and again, don't forget about zero point foods and lean protein. Did you gain along the way? I didn't have any major gains in the last 20 months of my health journey. I had plenty of months where I stayed static and maintained. There was like a six month period last year during pandemic life where I chose to focus more on the well-being of my family and our mental health than on my losing weight health journey. And that was a huge accomplishment for me. I don't know the last time I lost a significant amount of weight and then was able to maintain um, without gaining it back just by switching over to eating intuitively. And I was able to do that because I had stopped tracking. I had stopped, you know, focusing on WW points. I didn't focus on calories yet. So... That was a big positive for me actually was taking that time um, and having a maintenance period. So that was very helpful. It really encouraged me to know that this isn't just a short-term loss. It can be a long-term healthy lifestyle change because I'm learning habits that are allowing me to keep it off even when I'm not tracking. So I haven't had a huge gain. Obviously week to week, our bodies can fluctuate up to like five pounds even day to day, you know, with women, your time of the month or bloating or, you know, all those things. And so I try not to take it too personally with the scale. If I'm going up and then down, I definitely try not to weigh myself more than once a week. And then I really look at my weight loss as a whole over the month. I do weigh in weekly just to check on my progress and see where I'm at. If I need to make any adjustments for the week. Um, but I look at my overall month for my loss versus a gain. And I have not had a gain month. I've had gain weeks, but not a gain month because I adjusted. So there you go. Have you always exercised since the beginning? Mm -mm. When I was 365 pounds, I was basically living a sedentary life. Um, the most exercise and movement I got was playing with my baby. She was, Lila was like one years old then. So it was playing with Lila. Sometimes we would do walks outside with our dog or with her in the stroller, but I got tired very quickly. I don't think at that point I could have even walked a whole mile without being exhausted. So I wanted to get into my new health journey in a slow, successful way. So the first phase I did joining WW was learning more about how I was eating at that weight. Then I moved into progressing in the weight loss department, changing eating habits, focusing on food because food is like 90% of weight loss. But for me to keep my body healthy during weight loss, I could not jump full force into an exercise plan. I needed to slowly and gradually work my way up so I didn't injure myself. So that was very important for me. Um, I started off with food. <laughs> And then I did end up joining a gym and I worked with a trainer a couple of times and we talked through like kind of a plan. I did start working out mostly with weights, um, not a ton of cardio, but started some lifting a few times a week. And then, I mean, the whole world went to SHIT <laughs> and I stopped going to the gym. So then I kind of wasn't working out very much. I was walking outside and doing more active lifestyle things. Um, and then not until really after 2021 started when I had my Fit February challenge, did I start working out regularly again. And I still try to work out three times a week, as well as I'm trying to continue walking my mile a day that I started back in May. Sometimes I do more. Um, it just depends. I want, I make it a goal to move and exercise weekly, but I'm not like a gym rat. Are you doing okay? Have you gotten some water? Hydrated? Get a snack? I'm sorry, I'm so chatty. I can't help it. I just, I can't stop talking. This is a fun question. This is, what is your guilty pleasure when you want to splurge? If there's something, ugh, I mean, seasonally, it is summer. And I am not someone who craves ice cream all year round, but in the summertime, especially like on the weekends or when we're doing fun stuff with our family, I love going out for ice cream. If you guys are from I don't know if they're just in the Atlanta, Georgia area or if they're all over the South, but Brewster's ice cream, so good. I don't ever crave like junk food that you can pre, that are prepackaged that you can buy in the store, like um, snack cakes or cookies or things like that. That's not really my thing. I do love 
bakeries and like bakery pastries, that kind of stuff, like croissants, um, cake. <laughs> Those are like the sweet treats that if I really, really want to be indulging, it's that kind of a thing. And hey, some days if I want it, I eat it, I count it, I move on. I have a sensible portion of it now, so I don't overindulge like an entire cake later. And I actually had a lot of questions about motivation. How do I stay motivated? Tips and tricks, what do I use to stay motivated? And I kind of talked with you guys earlier um, about having written down my five reasons why. And I keep them in my journal, which I keep on my nightstand over there. And those are my reasons. And they, I will link again, the video where I talk through all of that in the description down below. But they're things that are so important to me, like moving on to grow our family and, you know, having a long, healthy life, things like that, that I need to remind myself of, especially that next phase of starting our family, that's my motivation. That is my why I can't wait till tomorrow. I have to do it today because baby fever. So I know that's not everyone's motivation, but find those reasons why your health journey is important to you, why you want to lose weight and use that as your motivation. Um, another thing that is great motivation that I think is awesome is finding rewards for yourself. Reward yourself for your hard work, um, whether that is you know buying yourself something or if it's a trip maybe, you know, find those things that will motivate you to get to your goals and reward yourself for meeting your goals. We may or may not have recently booked something special for me hitting my 75 pounds down mark, which I will share with you guys when it happens. So then I also had a lot of questions about calories versus points. When I decided to start tracking calories, why did I start tracking a calorie deficit? Is there a preference for one or the other? And does one outweigh the other when I'm tracking both throughout the day? So first off, a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is comparing calories you take in, what you eat and drink, versus calories you put out, the energy you burn every day. And your body burns energy, whether it's through fitness and exercise, but also just through living. <laughs> My body is burning calories right now just by sitting up, by breathing, by talking to you guys. That is your base calories out. So I used a calorie deficit calculator, which was highly recommended by some nutritionists as well as friends of mine who were doing a calorie deficit program. They got it recommended to them by their certified nutritionist. So that's why I chose to use this online one. I will put the link in the description for you guys if you want to look at yours and get curious about what your calorie deficit should be. It's going to take you through a questionnaire asking about your gender, your age, your weight, your height, your activity and fitness level, as well as your goals for how much you weigh and how much you want to be losing weekly. And using that information, it's going to give you a number, which I like to take as a number range. So if I want to be losing between one to two pounds a week, for slow, steady, healthy, happy weight loss, I need to be eating between 1,800 and 2,000 calories a day to be at a calorie deficit to lose one to two pounds a week. I highly suggest doing some research, talking to your doctor, medical professional, nutritionist, if you're interested in changing your eating habits though, or getting on a new plan. I'm not a certified physician. I'm just telling you guys about my journey and my story and how I'm doing this process for my health journey. So because I started noticing such a big difference in the calories I was taking in versus being at my points and how far off I was four or 500 calories under my deficit goal, but also making it to my WW points every day. Now that means a few things. I think one, I wasn't eating enough zero point foods throughout the day, lean proteins, veggies, fruit, because all of those things, even though they're zero points on the WW plan, they have calories. So they would add to my calorie total throughout the day. So I knew I needed to up my zero point foods. And then also because WW gives you weeklies, I can add more calories to my days using those. So that's right now how I'm using both to track. I'm tracking my WW points 
I'm also keeping up with my calories and then I'm able to see throughout the day if I'm super low in calories compared to where I am in points, I need to be eating more zero point foods. Maybe I need to start using some weeklies on that day, eat an extra snack to get to my points, as well as my goal of 1800 to 2000 calories a day. So me personally, what I'm doing tracking both is trying to get as close as possible, even if it means going over slightly on one or the other to my points and my calorie range. So I'm not eating too little and stalling out my own progress. So that's how I use them together. Someone asked about if I had a preference for calories or WW. That's a hard question. I would never be where I am in my journey without the WW program. It simplified everything. I, I was at the point where I just needed a program to tell me what to do. How do I lose weight? And WW did that for me. It said, look up your food, scan your food, put it in for the day, stay under this amount of points. Bada boom, done. Um, I learned a lot about food and eating from the WW plan. Now that I'm tracking calories, I love the idea and concept of calories in, calories out. That also makes it really simple. I need to be burning more calories than I'm eating in order to lose weight. So for me though, when I started the WW point system being a lower number, like 43 is a much more manageable number per day than 2000 <laughs> and having to add all of that up. So for me, WW was the perfect place to start. I have really enjoyed tracking calories recently and think that moving forward, once I get to a point where I just want to be tracking one or the other, I could see myself switching over to counting calories. I've never seen myself as a lifetimer on WW before. So basically, I wanna use the tools of WW and calorie counting to get myself to a healthy weight. And then as I'm learning and changing my habits with eating and my relationship with food, be able to intuitively eat to just manage a healthy weight. I'll work on my health for the rest of my life. This isn't going to end when I reach a certain number. They're healthy goals and it's something I'm gonna be always working on. I just don't see myself wanting to track my food and everything I eat for the rest of my life. So the last thing on calories versus WW, someone asked was, does one outweigh the other when I'm tracking? So I start, my main focus of tracking is still WW right now. I double track with calories as like a backup. And then when I see I'm really far off my calories from where my points are, that's when I know to either eat some more zero point foods or I will dip into my weeklies to get closer to the calorie goal. So for me, WW is still primary and calorie counting is secondary. Okay, so here's a fun one. What are some non-scale victories? All right, so I have, you know, I obviously have the big ones, which are none of my clothes were fitting me anymore. I've lost... Let's see, I was like a 26, 28 when I started and now I'm a size like 18, 20, depending on the brand. So I've lost like three or four sizes. Um, that's nice. I can officially shop in most standard stores. I don't only shop in plus size stores anymore. So that's really great. It was really fun being able to go shopping with my mom when I went up to visit over Easter. That was kind of one of my goals was being able just to shop with my mom and sister without feeling isolated that I had to go to a separate store for me that were plus sizes. So there's that, but also small things like jewelry, like my wedding rings spin. I am holding off right now because it's summer and I feel like my fingers sometimes swell in the summer, but by this fall, I'm probably gonna need to get them sized down. And then also speaking of jewelry, um, this is just like a little gold L. My husband got it for me for my first Mother's Day with Lila. L for Lila. Um, but when we got it, I couldn't wear it initially. And I was almost embarrassed that I couldn't put it on right away to show him. Um, but we went to a jewelry store and I had to get an extender piece because it didn't fit my neck. So no extender piece. It's not even on like the smallest <laughs> loop. And it's supposed to just be like a little one that sits right here. So that's exciting. I don't have to have like an extension on necklaces. They fit. My rings are getting too big. My clothing sizes have gone down. Um, another big non-scale victory that I hit back when we did travel to Chicago for Easter to see my family was I didn't have to go through the embarrassment of asking for a seatbelt extender on the plane, which I've had to do before. 
Oh my gosh, it's one of the worst days of my life. That was a whole thing. Also, I feel like now that I'm under 300 pounds, that's like a big benchmark for weight limits on things like furniture or like rides and things like, you know what I mean? So um, a lot of stress and anxiety, just always thinking about the number of my weight is gone now that I'm under 300 pounds. And that alone, that outside of, you know, being able to wear cute clothes and my jewelry and seatbelts and things like that, like just the stress and anxiety of those numbers being over 300, over 350 even at the beginning pounds, the weight of that off of me from the stress, that's like the biggest non-scale victory is I feel like I can breathe. Like I don't have all this extra weight weighing me down and I'm not always concerned. Number one thing <laughs> when I see anything we're going to purchase or something we're going to do is my weight going to affect it. So another question someone asked was, do you still see yourself at your heaviest? Any body dysmorphia? And I feel like it took me a really long time to see any difference in my own body. Other people said they saw differences. I knew the number on the scale was going down. My number and measurements was going down, but I felt like I looked the same in my clothes. I looked in the mirror and I still felt like I looked the same. It wasn't until I got over that 50 pounds down mark that I felt like I started seeing a change in my face being slimmer, in my body shape being different. So now though, I am 75 pounds down and I don't see that old person in the mirror. In fact, when I look at photos, I don't recognize that as me, the woman who was 365 pounds. It's hard because I really don't have almost any before photos. I was so embarrassed and shy and hated anyone taking photos of me. I actually really don't have very many before photos. So sorry if you guys see the same photos over and over in my thumbnails. I only have like four photos of me from my heaviest weight. Um, I would make people delete photos because I didn't want them around. So I don't recognize that person. This feels more like me. I feel like I'm looking more like the me I remember from before having gained that last bit of weight. And then I also got a handful of YouTube questions. So I'll answer those real quick and then we'll get into really quick sharing all of my eight month results and the giveaway info. What's your favorite video type to make? I love sharing content with you guys and I love that I'm able to have this creative outlet to share my passion for cooking and recipes and helping others as we all like grow towards our health goals together. And um, I do love creating recipes and cooking, but I think my favorite style of video to film is actually more vlog style, like day in the lives or what I eat in a days or a week in my life vlog because they show such variety and it gets to share a bunch of different pieces of my healthy life journey, not just what I'm eating. Do you plan to keep the channel after you've reached your goal weight? Yes. Um, I know a lot of people have a very specific like weight loss journey channel or WW channel. And for me, I think it's important that I'm coming at this journey as a lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle journey. And I'm never gonna be finished working on my health or cooking healthy for my family. So I am so excited that I get to use the channel to document my weight loss journey as a part of my healthy lifestyle. But there's so many aspects to my health. As a mom, as a woman who's battled her weight her whole life, this is not gonna end when I reach a specific number. This journey is for my life. So I can't say that I will do YouTube forever. I really don't know, but I really, really enjoy the planning, the content creation, the editing, the marketing, the design. There's so many aspects that go into having a YouTube channel. And I just, I love the variety and I love getting to express myself creatively while also kind of having a side hustle that helps support my family. What's the proudest moment of your journey? There's been so many moments that I've been really proud of my growth and where I've gotten to and all of the milestones that I've met. But I have to say, when I hit 
under 300 pounds that was just so eye-opening to me that it wasn't just a little bit of weight loss that I was doing this for the first time in my life, in my entire life of trying to lose weight, I was doing it, I was succeeding at it, and it was staying off. I first got over 300 pounds leading up to my wedding. Yeah, I gained weight <laughs> instead of losing before my wedding. Again, all the story time stuff. Um, but it was really hard for me. I felt like I just was packing on pounds leading up those last couple months before my wedding and I couldn't figure out why and I was in a panic. And so to me, getting over 300 pounds, I associate with the fear and the sadness and the dread of that moment going over 300 leading up to my wedding. So terrified I wasn't gonna fit in my wedding dress the day of my wedding. And I have always, associated big life events, I remember exactly how much I weighed at each of those events. I know how much I weighed at my senior prom. I know how much I weighed graduating college. I know how much I weighed when I left for New Hampshire to go start that job out of state where I ended up meeting Josh. How much I weighed on my wedding day, how much I weighed at many points throughout my pregnancy with my daughter. It's just, my weight has been so intertwined into every large life event for me. And it's always been the number one thing in the front of my mind. So getting under 300 pounds was something I struggled so hard to do for about six years. And it was kind of like, I got through that huge barrier and I can keep going. So that's, Probably my proudest moment was pushing through that really big milestone goal. And then it all kind of came into perspective how far I've come and knowing that I can still keep going. Okay guys, now that we've gotten through the Q and A, thank you so much for sending in questions. I still, I'm in shock at how many questions I got. I promise I will answer the rest of them in the next Q and A um, and leave more questions if you have them. But let's go ahead and review my eight month update. I did announce over on my Instagram, my weigh in, but I wanna share that with you guys. I did record it. So here's my weigh in for June 1st as well as my measurements for the month and some side-by-side -side pictures of my progress. Never up, never down, never. Like a theme in a song, clever. Feeling high, feeling low at the same time. Feel so right, then I'm right. And I'll be fine But I get up, I always do I never think, I always do Never thought I wouldn't jump Oh, what a fool But if I fall, I would get up again ready to hear about our giveaway. This was supposed to be my 5k halfway Q&A with a giveaway, but y'all are so amazing. By the time I sat down to film answering these questions, which you guys just sent in this week, my channel has hit 6k. I cannot believe I hit a thousand more subscribers in the course of a week. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for following along my channel and my journey. I wanna say thank you by offering a giveaway to you guys. This is not sponsored. This is from me to you to thank you for everything you guys have done for me, keeping me accountable and motivated, as well as for my family, allowing Lila to have a mommy at home with her. And so thank you again for watching my content for watching the ads and for allowing me to share occasional sponsored videos. It really helps to support my family and I couldn't ask for anything more than the accountability, motivation, and inspiration you guys give me to be a healthier, better me for myself and my family. So you guys know I'm a coffee fiend. Coffee is more than just a wake me up in the morning. I truly love and enjoy it. And I know a lot of you guys do too. So for our 
5K, now a 6K, I guess, giveaway. And thank you from me to you. I'm gonna be sending one of you guys my very favorite cold brew coffee pitcher, as well as a bag of my favorite cold brew beans. So you guys can be making cold brew and fun iced coffee drinks all summer long. I also have a special tumbler I'm gonna be sending you guys to give you a little happy because I feel like fun cups make me happy and they bring me joy and I wanna bring you guys a little joy too. So that's the giveaway package. So in order to win the giveaway, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and follow me over on Instagram. Please like this video and comment down below with your favorite kind of video to watch on my channel. And then you'll be entered. I'll be using a random selector to find today's winner and I will message you directly about sending you your goodies. So again, thank you guys so much for watching, for liking, for subscribing, for following my journey. And until next time, bye. bye. I always do. I never think. I always do